Welcome to another episode of Quantum Computing. In this episode, I want to talk about quantum gates, which are essential for designing quantum algorithm. But what is a quantum gate? There are similarities and differences between quantum gate and classical logic gates. Here, for example, we have AND gate, which operates on two bits and produces one output. For example, an input 1 and 0, the output will be 0. Note that this gate is not reversible. It means that if I know the output, there is no way I can figure it out what is the input. For example, the input could be 0, 1 or 0, 0, and both of them in the AND gate produce 0. We could combine AND gate and OR gate to build more complex gates. And for example, combine it with an AND gate to have more functionality. And you can see that we can repeat this operation for many times and this is one of the power of the classical computation because we can use the compositionality of the logic gate to build more complex and uh, more advanced uh, logic. So the input of this circuit is a binary string of 0 and 1 and the output also is a binary. But quantum computers do not operate on bits and they operate on qubit. We feed this quantum state to this quantum gate and we get another quantum state in the, as a output. So the output should be another uh, quantum state which we could represent it on the block sphere. But operation on the qubit by the quantum gates are unisame. Unitary matrix are a matrix that if we multiply U by its conjugate transport, we get identity matrix. In this equation, U dagger is a conjugate transpose of the matrix U. By transpose, I mean we replace the rows and the columns of the matrix. And by conjugate, I mean we change every complex number here to its conjugate. And this is a conjugate transpose of matrix U. Because quantum gate represented by unitary matrix, so the unitary matrix change the state of the quantum system from psi1, for example, to psi2. So if the psi1 is the input to the quantum gate represented by unitary matrix U, the output of this circuit will be psi2. One interesting property of unitary matrix is that they preserve the norm means that if I apply a unitary matrix in the quantum state psi1, then the length of psi2, the output, is equal to the length of psi1, the input. And this is a straightforward to see that the length of psi2 is actually the inner product of psi2 with psi2, but we know that psi2 is actually uh, application of unitary matrix U on psi1, and we have the inner product of our U psi1 in u psi 1. But we know that for matrix A, inner product of Ax in Y is equal to inner product of vector X in conjugate transpose of A in Y. And from this, uh, we conclude that uh, inner product of psi 2 in psi 2 is actually equal to u, u dagger psi 1 in psi 1. But because u is unitary matrix, u, u dagger is equal to identity matrix. So we have identity matrix in psi1 and product with psi1, but identity matrix on any vector uh, is uh, same vector, so the output here is psi1. But the norm of the vector in the Hilbert space is actually the length of the vector. So unitary matrix preserves the norm of the vector. But what does it mean in quantum computation? So every unitary matrix represents a quantum gate which has an input and an output. Suppose here the output is a quantum state psi1 which is a qubit so we know that it's a two state quantum system with two main states. The output should be also another quantum state on a two state which is another qubit. But we know that we could represent a qubit psi1 as alpha 0 plus beta 1 which alpha and beta are complex numbers 
and magnitude of alpha square plus magnitude of beta square is equal to 1 and we know that this magnitude of alpha square and this magnitude of beta square actually represent the probability of collapsing quantum state to a state 0 or 1. After feeding this state psi1 to this quantum gate u which is represented by unitary matrix we get another quantum state psi2 which has another form for example gamma0 plus eta1 but again the magnitude of gamma square plus magnitude of eta square is equal to 1 but the magnitude of alpha square plus magnitude of eta square is actually the length of uh, quantum state psi1 and also magnitude of uh, gamma square plus magnitude of eta square is the length of uh, quantum state psi2 so we have seen that unitary matrix don't change the uh, length of the vectors so we have this same probability uh, not same probability distribution but uh, we have again uh, the coefficient which are complex numbers uh, which they represent the probabilities they might use the squares to represent the probabilities so we know that system either collapse in psi one either collapse to zero or one so the sum of the probability should be equal to one uh, but after uh, feeding the system uh, feeding the state to another uh, state we have seen that uh, again the probability of collapsing to zero and one uh, the sum of the probability should be equal to one Another interesting property of uh, unitary matrix is that these matrices uh, preserve the inner product. It means that the inner product uh, between the image of two vectors is equal to the inner product of the original vectors. So it implies that if psi1 and psi1 prime, uh, the inner product with these two vectors is equal to zero, it means that these two vectors are perpendicular. So the output uh, of the input image are also perpendicular. For example, if psi2 uh, be the image of psi1 uh, under u and psi2 prime be the image of psi1 prime under u, then uh, these two vectors are also perpendicular. Similar to a classical logic gate, uh, we built a complex circuit based on just a few uh, gates here we could do the same and we can build a more complex uh, quantum circuit based on just a few uh, quantum basic gates on one qubits. The first gate is Pauli X gate and uh, you can see that these gates operate on one qubit so they should be 2x2 two two complex matrix. Another one is Pauli Y matrix which enters i uh, 0 minus i and i 0 and uh, we know that i is equal to a square root of uh, minus 1 and Pauli Z matrix which is 1 0 and 0 minus 1 but the most important one is the Hadamard K uh, which is 1 over a square root of 2 1 1 1 minus 1 and it plays an important role in the quantum computation let's see what's happened to different qubit uh, on uh, the X gate. For example, here we have a zero qubit, which is a vector to the complex vector one zero, and we want to see the output of this gate X gate on this vector. But the output simply is just a, a matrix multiplication of X on the vector one zero, and you can see that the multiplication gives us zero one. So the output is the vector 1, uh, which is 0, 1, and uh, if the input is the north part of the black sphere, uh, the output is the south part of the black sphere. Let's see what's happened uh, to the state 0 after uh, we apply Hadamard gate on this uh, vector. This is the north pole of the black sphere and we want to apply Hadamard gate on this vector so it means that we multiply this matrix H uh, on this vector 0 which is 1 0 the output is the superposition of 0 and 1 
and uh, you can see that uh, this is the corresponding vector in the uh, black sphere and uh, with 41 over 2 uh, we get the result 0 and with uh, 41 over 2 we get the result 1 another name and notation for this state is plus state so at first in a state 0 uh, the probability of uh, measuring uh, 0 was 1 but after uh, we apply the Hadamard kit on this uh, state we get state plus which is a superposition of uh, 0 and 1 and uh, the probability of uh, seeing 0 is 1 over 2 and the probability of seeing 1 is uh, 1 over 2 Thanks for watching today's video If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon for updates Leave any comments or questions below See you in the next video